everybody, and welcome back to The New Nasty Boys. I'm your co-host this morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you decide to watch or listen to this thing, Billy DeVore, and sitting next to me is my co-host, Chris Weir. Thanks for stopping in, Nasty Nation. Welcome back to the Fart Dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> we It took us until December 11th, you'll be watching this on December 12th, to get our, just to get the intro perfect. Yeah, I think there's no more uh, we can add to it. Uh, we've hit the high water mark. We've done it. That's a pretty tight intro. I mean, we re reference farts. Mm -hmm. uh, we throw out some uh, shade to, uh, I don't know, just idiots. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, and, and we also let you enjoy it on your schedule. Mm. And speaking of our schedule, we're going to put a wrap on this episode. We're done. We're going to defer the rest of this episode to three years down the line. So you'll be able to watch the next 53 minutes mm. in about three years when we really have to pay for it. Yeah. And actually, we're going to do a straight three and a half hours of stamps.com uh, read offs. <laughs> Just real quick, we're going to pack it all in right here. It makes the most sense. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. The interest rate we're going to get on our future payments, terrible. It's still not good. It's not great for anyone involved in this area. <laughs> no, it actually, it actually is damaging to the audience of our podcast and, you know, just the sport in general. If you don't get that joke, uh, we'll explain it in a little bit. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Very excited. Very happy to be here before uh, we launch fully into the holidays, I guess. I I don't know, man. Like, do you feel like with people setting up for Christmas, like, in mid-November? Mm-hmm. And then, like, now it's December 11th going into the 12th. Like, did, did, did it even happen? How do we even time it? Do you feel like you're in a time vacuum like I am? I, I just feel like it just skids real quick. I mean, it... The fact that it goes quickly is the is familiar, you know. It just seems like the years go fast and the days go so slow. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the holidays just kind of really. That was a modest mouse uh, lyric I threw out there. <laughs> but dude, I just feel like they're like it just completely just goes super quickly once you hit uh, October. So yeah, and you start seeing like all the decorations being uh, thrown up. There was uh, we had a neighbor across the street left up uh, some of his Christmas decorations all year. I'm not quite sure what it was about. Uh, sure. But now, look who's laughing. <laughs> it's him. He's an insane person. He's an insane person. It's like, it looks out of place for two and a half months now, when it used to just be like a month. You know, I was staunchly December 1st. That's when we can do it. Or after Thanksgiving, I'll give you a little leeway. Let me, let me get a little bit of time to enjoy it. Not like, it's November 1st. We got to get the tree up. I think I'm more bothered by seeing it all in the stores. It's where you can see, like, they're just getting ready for this militia of, like, Santas and elves. These little plastic guys, like, just yeah. take over the Home Depots and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just like, just give it a second. We, I'm still buying, like, Halloween candy right now. <laughs> so I just don't like when I see, like, the... You know, all the holidays, you're, you're shopping for Halloween, and then they got Christmas. It's on full display. That's the thing that bothers me. Yeah, you're telling me that the that the pumpkin Reese cups and the tree Reese cups are fresh at the same time? Not happening. No, thank you. Mm -mm. I don't buy it. I like to get a discount on my pumpkins. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be able to do that because they're just going to switch most of the production over to the trees, and just the Reese industry collapses. That's what's going to happen. Well, Reese eco ecosystem. I also thought you were getting ready to launch into some Smash Mouth lyrics. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't. But uh, it might happen a little bit later. Okay. I, I, I demand that you at one point have to quote All Star. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'll find it. I'll get to it. That was that was one of the words. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, I don't really mind uh, all the, the Christmas overlap. Mm. with the certain things. But uh, I mean, all the commercialism kind of fucking blows. It all blows. Yeah. I, I, I just, I think it might just be being a curmudgeon. Well, I know we're just talking about, about a bunch of negative capitalist <laughs> stuff here. We're just coming off the heels of just kind of like shouting about just how the world's going to the shitter and we're in yeah. late stage capitalism. <laughs> <sighs> and I said I was going to be the, the oil to your vinegar. And I'm, I, we're just two vinegars. We're just two vinegars, baby. <laughs> we need some Italian seasoning to come in here and break this shit up. Mm -hmm. Well, what'd you do uh, since I last seen you? I, I cried today. Mm -hmm. It really broke down. It's just, no, okay. I, I had a good week. Again, I um, Leash and I celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary. Congrats! Went to Colette. It was a delicious meal. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a mostly French restaurant. Their words, not mine. Mm -hmm. And then, dude, just chilled the rest of the weekend. Oh, that sounds great. It was awesome. Yeah, this is a great time for chilling. The weather uh, is getting pretty cold. Very easy to stay in bed a little bit longer. Uh, it's really dark out. Suicidal thoughts at an all-time high. <laughs> 
<laughs> great for sweatpants. Great for sweatpants. Oh my, the alt, the fart pants, dude. Oh yeah, they are changing colors. That time of the year. Yeah, dude. I my lounge shorts. I did this on purpose. Already, already brown. Uh, I just got some new ones. Lauren got me. They're already kind of like this dark beige, which I really appreciate. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I can't wait to add some mileage to those. Yeah, just some some new holes, some new smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really experiment. It's getting wild. It's pretty great. <laughs> it's real nice. Um, and uh, well, how was uh, how was your weekend? How was your week? It's good. I uh, did a show at uh, something. It was a book place called uh, Household Books. Really fun. Highly recommend that. That was uh, in downtown, I believe, like or Clifton area, something like that, Cincinnati. A lot of fun. A lot of uh, hip. There was a bunch of records there. There had a bunch of uh, cool books. Uh, set up almost like I was going to say a blockbuster, you know, but for books, <laughs> which is that's just a library. <laughs> Wouldn't uh, it be a bookbuster? Yeah, it was a bookbuster. <laughs> yeah, or Borders. Yeah, yeah, yeah Borders. <laughs> I, regardless, I stole several things. No, I didn't. I didn't. Although I did get a Rick Paterno book that they gave me and like part of like the payment. And he's got like uh, this, like the you know the plays and sketches behind his face, the X's, and they got a very out of place uh, shot of I, I'm assuming the top of the key. Which could, coming out of the cranium there looks like a cock dribbling some semen. <laughs> yeah, there's the tip of the there's the tip of the hog. There's the dribble. And that's a stripper that he hired for one of his athletes in Louisville. Yeah, I thought comics were messing with him when I checked it. I was like, oh, they already drew. And I was like, no, this is designed to be. That was actually a design play. Yeah, I mean, that looks, I mean, there's another hog coming from the back. That looks like a medical diagram. Yeah, that's a, that's not a fun diagnosis there, but a great play. <laughs> yeah, the diagnosis is you're, sh you're shooting sideways. You'd be shooting straight out here. That's why you're ex experiencing pain. In this region. It is a pick and roll, and you're going to have to speak to a dermatologist. <laughs> a pick, roll, and penicillin. Yeah, start drinking cranberry juice. <laughs> but Success is a choice, but your wiener health isn't. <laughs> but UTIs, those uh, come and go. Yeah, <laughs> come and go. So this is actually just an ad read for Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice. Mm -hmm. Cleans up any UTI. Or if you just want a delicious, tart, fruity beverage, Ocean Spray, from Rick Patino. Live your life. <laughs> no apologies. No apologies. Mm -hmm. It's what? Red Chew. It, what was it? Red Chew. Red Chew? <laughs> Red Chew. You like blue chew? Oh, uh, okay. I got it. Sorry. Never mind. Mm. You're good. I went too far down the rabbit hole. I drove too hard in the paint. <laughs> ah, there you go. Brought it back. There it is. Yeah, but I went to that show. That was fun. Uh, had a bunch of like uh, work going on in the house. Bathrooms. This is adult stuff. Bathrooms are taken care of, but I fucking love it. Uh, Dude, it's, a big, it's a big one. Yeah, I'm stoked about it. But, uh, you know, it's a little. it seems a little tacky talking about house stuff and in this economy. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I got a 65-inch TV up there. Oh, I'm ready to put over a freshly uh, finished mantle. I can't wait. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be real fun. Did you, uh, so when you hire the people to do your bathroom, did you only pay them like maybe like a tenth of what they did and then you defer the rest of the payments so you sell the house in 25 years? Yeah, but it was their idea. <laughs> it was all their idea. Yeah. All right, let's fucking get into it. We've teased it enough. Um, Shohei Otani signed with the Dodgers to no one's surprise. 10 years, $700 million. That's a ruse. That is a little bit more than what I make. It's just a touch more. Yeah. But here's the thing. It just dropped about a couple hours ago. Um, he's Out of that $700 million, his average annual value, $2 million. Mm -hmm. How can that be? How can that be? Because the rest is deferred. Mm -hmm. It's deferred until after the contract in 2034. Yeah, that is uh, legal criminality, and that's going to be, uh, what do you think, Billy Parr for the course going forward? I mean, it's just <laughs> rich people trying to avoid paying taxes. Mm. Like, none of, the, none of this is new. I mean, this sort of, like, it's just a repackaged criminality. It's rich people doing what they do, which is fudging all the rules, making plenty of room for them to kind of manipulate the system. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, yeah, of course he's going to go to the Dodgers and they're going to do this. And it's such a bummer. Um, and I'm not quite sure. I don't, I'm not going to put it, put it solely on Otani here. I, I'm, it wasn't solely his idea. I was like, no, dude, he thought of it, dude. He pitches, he throws, he hits. He's his own accountant. He he does all the numbers. He's a statistician. Dude, we can't 
this was him. Yeah, this was all on him, man. No, don't look, don't look at me. I'm not a part of a group of billionaires who don't want to pay a unicorn. This is on the unicorn. Yeah, this idea was workshopped for a long time. Yeah. Oh, come on. I look. Do I believe? God. All right. There's so much. Do I believe that? Like he did say this. For sure, I think that he probably did. And when you look at it from Otani's point of view, think about how much money he's already made from sponsorships, ad deals, and he's a global icon. He's a global advertising juggernaut. Absolutely. The amount of money that he makes just from advertising alone is just dwarfs like the salaries uh, of some teams like just in total. Yeah. I mean, look at like Tom Brady's net worth. He he made in the, in the seventeen years he played football, he made three hundred and thirty four million dollars. But he's worth what, like one point six billion, and it's from like Nike and Under Armour and like Gatorade and like all that other stuff. You know what it kind of reminds me of? What Jay Leno? Oh yeah, it's not, I never <laughs> spent a dime of my baseball money. I never spent a dime. All I lived off of my Burger King money, my stand-up money. <laughs> I never touched a dime of my Doritos money. That's what uh, Shohei's going to so, say. Yeah, he's like, you know what? I never touched any of my pitching money. All my money came from New Balance. <laughs> and hitting. <laughs> and then I can't wait for the, the podcast where he reveals all of this to Adam Carolla. Uh, dude, that, we just were saying that about like... Uh, I just thought about, like, uh, obviously, Michael Jordan, thinking about, like, the juggernauts of, like, the respective sports and the people that go on to be, like, their own sort of, like, Coca-Cola uh, brand. MJ just made how much money selling uh, his basketball team? Like, this didn't just come out of, like, mm-hmm. this is years in the making. So there's mm-hmm. very legitimate side effects to uh, all this money getting uh, pocketed away. Yeah, it's like $550 million. Yeah. Because uh, the rumor is is that he was in it so bad gambling mm-hmm. that he was like, I owe so many people so much money, I got to get out. Yeah. And so then he sold his team and then he paid off, uh, paid off the uh, the bookies and all these other people so he could still have a mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh boy, going deep on the conspiracy. You're gonna have to watch there. Thirty for Thirty or something. If you're gonna have to figure that out, dude. Everybody watched that Thirty for Thirty. We had nothing to do. It was what May of 2020. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, Tiger King's done, and then it was like, <laughs> well, actually, it's June. This is when the NBA Finals are supposed to be. Oh, there's Michael Jordan. A uh, perfect blend of sports and homicide. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, this is how you get like millennials together. It's like the one part of the Venn diagram, the greatest basketball player of all time in our generation, mm-hmm. and then right over top of it, true crime. That's where we get our wives to watch. Yeah, that's where we're gonna. That's where uh, sports is gonna start to grow. Like the more homicides, <laughs> like football with uh, the dude from uh, Ray, Ray Lewis. Well, I, well, yeah. That was, actually, I'm thinking like another one, but <laughs> we're gonna be here a while. No, no, no. The one guy from the Patriots. Oh God. Oh, from the Hernandez. Oh yeah, Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He murdered a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many people do you think like went out and got into football like after watching that? Like, man, this sport is really violent. <laughs> <laughs> I got a free Sunday. <laughs> I got a free Sunday. You know what? I can. And kill. his jerseys are probably really cheap. <laughs> I'll kill six days a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, that's a that's a that's a great point. But here's here's the crazy thing, man. There's nothing that anyone can do about this deferred salary. There's nothing. It's in the CBA. Uh, and this is a tweet from Jeff Passan, which is a screenshot of it, which is, you know, Article 16 Deferred Compensation. There shall be no limitations on either the amount of deferred compensation or the percentage of total compensation. Uh attributable to deferred compensation for which a uniform player's contract may provide. A true a, that was hard. That was a lot of words That's in there. That's a tough word and look, I think that is extremely damaging to the sport. Unlimited. That's not uh, a great way to structure that. No. Of no structure. No, I can just see now Magic Johnson with his cloak up and he's and like Shohei signs this and then he just goes unlimited power and then just yeah just yeah this just my Star Wars Emperor Palpatine <laughs> quote for the for the pod uh, yeah man I mean like the, 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 uh, you can't do that yeah that's you, I could have put it better myself you can't like you can okay, you can but you shouldn't. They're skirting $46 million in competitive balance tax. When people say, oh, there's no salary cap in baseball. Yeah, there is. There's a competitive balance tax where if you go over it, 
other teams are going to benefit from you spending money and it's spread around the sport. Now, if you're like, oh, they're all cheap, you know, they're, you're, these baseball owners are broke. They're not. They're just pocketing that money. And as other fan bases, you should be mad that they're doing that. I'm looking at you, Oakland, and you've been doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, we could have been doing this the whole time. There's a lot of organizations that honestly could not afford this. I was talking with my buddy about it today. He's like, imagine if the Royals did this. Yeah, I don't think it just couldn't happen. No, they couldn't do it because it would bankrupt them in 12 years. Yeah, they don't have the su substantial amount of funds to get over that uh, cap to be able to have this math work out. But they, these larger teams just have access to essentially – it's like be, having a team being able to shift and another team can't. You just It's inaccessible to other teams to be able to play at this sort, sort of uh, rate where they're able to attract like these players and just essentially hide funds. No, exactly. They're just hiding money in ma under mattresses. Mm. And like not only can't like they can't do it and the, the competitive balance tax and it's unfair to the other teams in the league, which this is the whole reason that it's there to make it all fair and balanced. <sighs> all of this is getting taxed later. Legally, like for Shohei, he's going to have to pay little to no taxes while he's getting his AAV because it's all being deferred. And then when he leaves California and goes over to Japan, who knows what those taxes look like? And that'll be another situation, too. It's like, oh, this is so complicated. I guess we'll figure it out, you know, when it comes up. So this is just one of those things where they have such a big buffer zone to do whatever they want because, you know, it's just rich people being rich. Yep. And it's just old Rich dudes finding a way to skirt paying taxes, which isn't anything new. And this is like the goat move for all of these owners right now. Yeah, this is going to be the format going forward for these large contracts. And just uh, you can just see like the the mechanism starting to turn for all these, you know, greasy palm people like, oh, my God, then we can do this sort of thing. And then we can pocket this over here. Mm -hmm. And then so this is like cat out of the bag scenario for uh, for the game to start to be like something that's it's it's incentivizing criminality yeah and it's it's not that good and i was fully prepared coming in here i was so excited over the weekend i'm like look i f i hate the dodgers i hate the dodgers we all should hate the dodgers and as reds fans it was a great rivalry in the 70s and 80s awesome rivalry and it kind of has faded out until they've gotten good and we go over there it's like oh, the dodgers are the big market team they're good and it's kind of went dormant but collectively now Every other NL fan should be like, I hate the Dodgers. I hate them for this. I hate them so much more. But what was I getting at? I got. I just got so sidetracked because I just hate the Dodgers. I understand. One thing I want to say. I just it, hate the Dodgers. I'm not at all upset that he's making $700 million. I mean, the man is a unicorn. Yeah. He's going to get paid a lot of money. Oh. There's nothing he can do about that. But the fact that it's being done the way it is and he's being, you know, they're saying he was orchestrating this. Now, there's a bunch of other people. I mean, clearly they have these thoughts with the way they set up uh, the wording of this. But yeah, did you figure out what you were going to I did. Say? Yeah. I did find it. Sorry. I came into this like, you know what? Just screw the Dodgers. It's fine. Whatever. He's going to be there. I'm so excited to watch. And then this stuff came out and I went, oh, he's going to single-handedly ruin the sport. Yeah. There's potential for that. There is potential. It tainted his name that otherwise was sparkling clean. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is the first time I've ever had in my mind a negative idea of Shohei, which is him being, at the very least, complacent with something that's going to have negative repercussions for years on the sport. Yeah. This is like the moment when, when Hulk Hogan went to Hollywood Hogan. Yeah. You know, when he joined the, when he started NWO, you yeah, know, yeah. went full heel. This is what it feels like. Okay, well, at least he's not wearing the the fedoras any or the the le, the feather boas. Oh, he is. He still is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you mean a Hogan? That's true. Or, or Shohei? I mean, Shohei's a big boa guy. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to think of. Uh, I'm not really that hip on uh, wrestling, but I just think uh, he ditched the feather boas when he went to he NWO. Did. At okay. least I'm trying to imagine him with black and white feather boas, and it I just doesn't make it. sense. See, I'm not either. I just know, like, that's just a monumental moment in wrestling history, and this is the closest thing I can compare it to I'm off think, the rip. I'm thinking about steroids too. If like we're talking about like problems being introduced in the sport, steroids was an era, and this is like Shohei Otani. Not doing steroids, but walking in 
uh, to the gym with a bag filled with needles ready to go. <laughs> he's just like, it's out there and he's the one that's ushering it in. Yeah. He basically, he opens up the bag. There's steroids. There's little greeny pills, you know, the yeah. amphetamines. And then they just ban every other race from the game. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically it. We're set all the way back to 1919 baseball. Yeah. Uh, this is going to, the mounds are going to be moved back. They're going to be up on a hill now. Uh, it's going to be uh, just chaos. We have umps that have one eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go back with like that shield thing. You can smoke on the field again. Oh, wool jerseys. Yeah. We're going all the way back. No, I mean, it, it's not. I mean, it, it's bad. I mean, considering what it can do for... Uh, it's just just small to medium market teams. What we thought with the with, with, with what the Braves did with the uh, Ozzy Albies contract and the Acuna contract were highway robbery. This is like white collar crime. Yeah, they stole a railroad. This That's- is Goldman Sachs shit. Mm-hmm. This is uh, no. This is uh, beyond my entire understanding of like uh, math numbers taxes like this is a scheme <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah this is uh this is a ponzi scheme 100 percent. yeah uh so final numbers all right final complete correct math this is from at john becker the discount rate is 4.3 percent which is that's um the interest rate the preset value of the 68 million is now 44 million 81 thousand four hundred seventy six dollars and fifty cents this makes the AAV of each year forty six million eighty one thousand four hundred seventy six dollars and fifty cents. Parentheses. The above plus two million, which isn't discounted, which is his annual AAV. Which then the present value of the contract in total is four hundred sixty million dollars eight hundred fourteen thousand seven hundred sixty four dollars and ninety seven cents. We went. I went into this weekend, or I went in and seeing that post and seeing ten years, seven hundred million, going. Oh my god. Baseball is thriving. It's alive. This is the biggest sports contract ever. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, actually, no, we baseballed it. Yeah. And it's not worth that much. Yeah, we were off by a little bit. We rounded some numbers. We fudged a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that is uh, 200. I mean, where where were we at there? 200,000 off? 230,000 off? 230 million. (laughs) 230 million, yeah. <laughs> My brain can't think that high. It couldn't even wrap it around. It's like, yeah, 230,000. No, no. You have to add another couple 230 tax brackets. Big Macs? What are we working with here? <laughs> Is this in doubloons? Yeah, this, that's way too much for me to, to handle it. But that's just, that is thievery. <laughs> but also at this point, we don't know if this reporting is accurate because of what happened leading up to it on Friday. With this, with all of the news going with, oh, he got, he's got this chartered flight, yeah. going from L.A., going to, to Hawaii to pick up his girlfriend, then going to Toronto. This is the exact plane. This is coming from a guy on Reddit who's tracking all of this stuff. Lands, gets off, and now it's like, oh my God, Joe, he's meeting with him. You, you say Kikuchi booked out a sushi restaurant for fifty of his closest friends. They're gonna celebrate that Shohei signed. No. Turns out, god damn it, it was Robert Herjavec from Shark Tank mm-hmm. was flying his family to Hawaii, picking up, going to Hawaii, then going to Toronto, or dropping him off in Hawaii, and then going to Toronto for some business stuff, gets off the plane, and then you say Kikuchi, that was a surprise birthday party for his wife. <laughs> and it just gets ruined by people who have to be in the cycle. The amount of things that happened negatively from that was hilarious. It was so funny. Robert Kirchhoff, who looks like a dude who would have a line of jazzer-sized tapes in the 90s. Oh, for sure. (laughs) He looks like a Richard Simmons knockoff, just with better, taller hair. Yeah, like bike shorts. That's like his all-the-time wear. Oh, and bright neons. Mm. Just ready to roll. Instead, he's like, I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Gets off and he's like, "Oh, I guess, I guess I'm Shohei. Where's my Where's my seven hundred ish million dollars?" Mm-hmm. And then his wife's birthday gets ruined because people were reporting it. I, my thing is, I want to know what you think. Should Should Otani been a little bit more transparent in this process, or do you like that he operated like a like a like an like you know he operated like a G? You know, I, I like playing it close to the vest. You know, you make moves in silence and your actions speak. 
and I think everything was going fine. It's just like how people just ended up, you know, I understand empathizing with the reporters. You got to be, you can't be late to this whole situation, but you can't be first and wrong. That's not going to help either. <laughs> no. So uh, I, I think Shohei played it well. You know, you're not, you don't have to tell anybody. This is a ton of money. The amount of people that he, he's talking to is probably astounding at this point. And then trying to like talk to anyone in the media, that's got to be like such another like level, like no fucking way. Not happening. (laughs) No, not doing it. No, thank you. I don't blame him. But at at the same time, man, it's like, this is the biggest free agent contract. Well, it was ever until you actually looked at it. But, um, Ever. I guess you could have set up like a conference, I guess. So yeah. like, hey, I'm gonna make an announcement on this date. By the way, yeah. just let you know. Yeah, or like, hey man, I'm just gonna give you guys some updates. Here's who I've been talking to, just to keep everybody interested. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at every other sport like NBA, NFL, day one of free agency, all of the giant dominoes fall. Mm. And we kind of get to know what's going on and they they sign. With baseball, it's like, well, it's been over for a month and a couple weeks. Still nothing. We have no idea what's going on. Yeah. It's, it, not only that, it, it creates bad television, even in the off season. If we're talk, talking about trying to make the game more interesting, let's make the off season more interesting too. No it, shit. Like it is just a silly format to have to go about this of uh, constant reporting on nothing to report. <laughs> yeah, we just have people just throwing it at each other and just just debating. Where look, look at the NFL, man. They do such a good job of keeping it a year round sport. Mm-hmm. The the draft is beyond hyped. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's that, and then training camp, people get so hype, um, and there's constant reporting on that. Um, then you've got the season, and then after the season, right after the season, you have college evaluations. You've got the the combine. Then you go combine goes right into the draft, and then it never stops. No, we need to have someone else just reorchestrate like the whole marketing of baseball. No kidding. Well, I mean, if they can't even get. Deferred money, right? And and they you can straight up money launder in the sport. You think they give a they they care about how popular it is? Yeah, dude, it's just straight up tainted. It's a bummer, but no, yeah, you're right. They do need to do a better job of it. And also with the people who are reporting, I mean, the big one was someone who works for MLB Network as their insider and got smoked. Yeah, that's embarrassing. That I mean, like you, that is the worst look. Because now you look at it and you're like, how can you say this guy's going to be right? Like, if, if I'm a casual fan and I flip on the TV and it's like, report, and it's his face right next to the MLB logo, you're like, oh boy, we got to be close. And then he got punked by Reddit. That's all I'm going to think about now. He's like the Bill Buckner uh, of <laughs> reporting. You know, yeah. I'm just going to think that that ass popping up a little too early. Yeah. <laughs> A little too early, the most early. Mm-hmm. Uh, t- yeah, it sucks, but and just to go back to like show, hey, maybe like giving these people like a little heads up, like hey, just to calm the anxiety, because all these people are trying to like you know refresh their news feeds, get any sort of scoop, piece together all these puzzles, and I can see why someone would make that uh, conclusion. Sure, it m- makes sense when you just look at those components of it, but it's it's funny that it happened the way mm. it did, but uh, not not for him. No, <laughs> dude, Friday. MLBTradeRumors.com crashed. Oh. I was just refreshing and it was just like a blank white screen. <laughs> the worst day for it to ever go down was that Friday with all of that. It was constant updates, dude. Mm. And it's just like, Shohei has bought a travel pillow. <laughs> uh, he, got, he got a neck pillow. <laughs> he got a neck pillow. <laughs> Shohei bought his dog a new vest. <laughs> Shohei's on Travelocity right now. <laughs> oh my God, Shohei's ordering an Uber Black right now. He's looking at Airbnbs in Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shohei's chucking his phone into the Niagara Falls. <laughs> oh, it has ruined his grandparents' anniversary. <laughs> So it was just wild. I, I mean, I think I would want a little bit more transparency, but I, th- I think, yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. And I, I just, that's that's my take on it. Cause like, you know, this gives us stuff to talk about. Mm-hmm. There's a reason we don't do this every week during the off season. Cause then we just be retreading the same old malarkey that everybody else is. And that's not fun for anybody. No, but uh, well, I, it was fun to get to see like all that happened, but uh, the the outcome of it still yet to really be no known. Dude, it's so funny. Imagine being Kikuchi's wife mm-hmm. and just showing up at your favorite restaurant 
and sitting there and eating sushi and like with 49 of her closest friends quietly <laughs> and just being like, I wish I didn't know about this. <laughs> I wonder if like a ton of reporters like just busted in there too. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> God damn it. I told John Morosi to fuck off. <laughs> Let me eat my temper in peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What was so funny now is now we're going to uh, like Cody Bellinger's fiance, wife, Girlfriend, slam piece, don't care. Mm-hmm. Talking Baseball posted her story, and it's like, Cody Bellinger's in Toronto because his girlfriend posted a picture of the Space Seal and said, what a pretty sunset. Like, at least they left some breadcrumbs mm-hmm. for us to enjoy. So, I don't know, it's still kind of creepy. Yeah, oh, definitely. Like, everyone's just really stalking everyone's, like, social media feeds. So that's probably got to stop. Yeah, it's got to stop. Yeah. So, but, but that's the world we live in, man. Yeah, bro. What yeah. are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? Defer payments. That's what Yeah, bro. Do. Don't cancel them. <laughs> Don't cancel. <laughs> defer, cancel dude. Me, dude, Shohei was probably, like, buying, like, a coat or something. And he's like, he's like, after pay. Wait, I can do this in installments? <laughs> that's all he does. Figure it out. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> By contract. So we can sign my friend Yamamoto. <laughs> That'd be great if he does still pay in installments with everything. <laughs> he's so rich, mm-hmm. kind of, mm-hmm. mostly. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, ah, you know what? Yeah, these shoes, I can do this in eight payments? No interest? Yeah, he could still be like a phenom like uh, with arithmetic and everything. <laughs> he could be really good with finances and everything. <laughs> he could. He's great at everything else. Yeah, well, easy, buddy. You know, that's your... your, your I'm treading on... Uh, okay, you're yeah, treading yeah, I on see, I see. really... <laughs> I'll back up. <laughs> that was really a comment on how talented it is. Yeah? I, yeah? But it's not going to come across that way. It's, it's not. But it is. It's mm. fine. But man, that's so... It's like, hold. Pull back. Yeah, yeah. Pull back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm not even going to say it. Um, well, we wish you the best, Shohei. Like, yeah, I don't, because he's a Dodger now. <laughs> You know, I don't. Ugh, I use a Dodger. That sucks. So, yeah. But no, I'll, I'll be too. I just wish I. Here's what I. Here's selfishly why I wanted him in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Friends up there that are fans. I'd go up and hang out with them. We'd go to a Blue Jays game and they'd be like, "There's the goat right there. There's Shohei," and he's living in a multicultural hub in Toronto. So a, a, a metropolis that everyone sleeps on. It's the second largest city in North America. Yeah, it's, I thought it'd be a good fit for that. It'd be a perfect fit. Mm. It would have been an awesome fit. Again, he's still on the water, which is what he wanted. I get it's going to be cold, but dude, not when you're there. It's, it's, you're there from March to... Ah, just It would have been awesome. It would have been great for the sport to have the sport's biggest player be up there and on Eastern time. Oh my god, yeah, that'd be amazing. Uh, I would, I'm going to miss so many games, just the fact that he's out in the West Coast. I mean, how many Angels games did you watch last year? Very few. Exactly. Just watch you know, the first couple at bats, like, all right, I saw him. I saw him, there he is, click. It's like, ah. And I'm not moving for show, hey? No. I'm not doing it. Dude, that still would have been rad if you went to Chicago. Just seeing him all the time. <sighs> I know. Well, there is one guy who moved from the West Coast to the East Coast. Who that? Uh, his name's Juan Soto. We didn't get a oh, chance yeah. to talk about him. Jeez, that's that's incredible. <laughs> like we haven't even mentioned Juan Soto. That's just how big of a player Shohei is. We are thirty three minutes and forty six seconds into this episode, and we didn't even get to uh, just a, a another massive move. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and speaking of late stage capitalism, uh, <laughs> go figure. Going to the Yankees. Good for them. <laughs> Good for them. They did give up a lot. Yeah, I love Michael King. That guy's mm-hmm. a beast. I think he's he's a dude who started out in the pen, and then they and he was dominant, and they went, you know what? I bet we can stretch him out, and they did. And there were points a couple times last year he went, you know, five, five and a third after putting up 80, 90 innings in the pen, then went to the rotation. It was going five innings, three hits, no runs, eleven Ks. He's versatile. He's a beast. And then there was that, and then a bunch of other pitching prospects and other prospects that the Yankees got. Um, or, sorry, that the Padres got. Mm-hmm. Um, for one year, I mean, the Padres reloaded. The Yankees got the starter they wanted. The Yankees were the Yankees. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, uh, I do kind of want to see like the, those teams kind of like I, I don't have much against like a lot of the players on each of those organizations. It's just the organization with the Yankees itself. But I do want to see like those players have some good seasons because I mean San Diego that, that, that was just rough for them uh, last season. Yeah, and their owner passed away the, uh, last month. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, but they've got so many dudes locked up. Like Tatis is locked up for twelve more years. Um, Bogarts for like eight more years. Manny restructured and extended at the end of before this last season started. So like they have cornerstones. They're going to be fine. It just depends if they can get the chemistry right Mm -hmm. with a new manager, with a new manager. And on top of that, if they can get enough starting pitching to be competitive in a division that is that has your NL World Series representative, the Arizona Diamondbacks, Mm -hmm. the Dodgers, and they're not done. Um, and, and it's top heavy with those two. And then who knows? I mean, the giants are willing to spend money. They've been trying to spend money. Like it's going out of style the past couple of years, but no one wants to go. Yeah. So it's just a real tough, hard division to, to try and make some ground in. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. Uh, so you feel for them a bit, and hopefully those uh, moves work out for them. But still, I mean, sit and spin if you're not the Reds. <laughs> sit and spin. Hey, how much money do you think is going to be deferred in Soto's contract next year when he's a free agent? Oh, my goodness. Who knows? Uh, probably a lot. Probably probably half. Probably uh, close to half. Uh, and they're the Yankees. And they also have ownership in Liverpool. Isn't that – I think that's it. Liverpool, they're, in, they're a part of one EPL deal. So one of those clubs, Premier League Soccer. So which means that they can just stash money across the world and then be like, yeah, we'll pay them later. <laughs> it's not for like competitive purposes in like that sense. It's financial purposes that give you a competitive edge that other teams <laughs> don't have access to. No. So in other words, it's cheating. And just dude, they're deferring more money than like some of our biggest contracts that we're going to be signing here. Yeah. Fucking outrageous. No. And, it, oh, God. It, it, and it, he, I'm just so mad because it affects us so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we're one of the smaller markets, like, well, smaller markets compared to, you know, LA, New York. Uh, my, uh, and you just can't compete with that. But they're trying to. They want to they sign uh, Jaime Candelario. Three years, $45 million. It's got a fourth year club option, which mm-hmm. I like. They brought he's a switch hitting, corner infield, son of a gun. Yeah. He's only deferring $75. <laughs> Real sweetheart deal. He's a sweetheart deal. Yeah. Mm. Uh, none of it def- none of it deferred. Um mm. it, it, I like it. I it it it, 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 it telegraphs some stuff later, which we'll get into, but age 30, got him for now what's the prime? I mean, he looked good. Mm-hmm. At the start, up until the trade deadline, and then he kind of bottomed out. If you look at his uh, what he did in Washington in 99 games, 258, 342, 481 with an OPS plus of 125, which means he's 25% above average. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's not too shabby. But then you look at the full total, you know, 119 after he got hurt and didn't, didn't really translate all that well over to Chicago, uh, 471 slug. And also, he would have had 30 homers if he played his home games at Great American Ballpark for the whole year. True. I mean, I got more hope with him than I do, like, uh, say, like a Will Myers starting off, uh, you know, where we were last year. So, uh, and two other things about this. One, you do have that anxiety of, like, oh, my God, we're adding another person to an already crowded infield. Uh, but you're also seeing, like, oh, they are willing to spend some money here if they think it's uh, appropriate. Yeah. So, uh, and who knows exactly if this is going to just add to like maybe a, a later transaction, but, uh, I kind of like, uh, them going out and trying to add to, uh, their offense and the, uh, the corner of the infields. Yeah. I like it infield. too. I mean, he's basically coming in to rotate it and where Joey was. Yeah. So this means that it's over. I mean, there's, there's no, they're not going to bring back Joseph Daniel Votto. Um, what I do like to see here is the batting run value. He's in the 83rd percentile last season, which makes him pretty good at that. Uh, he's also 76 percentile in sweet spot percentage, 22nd percentile in hard hit percentage. So that's not great. He barrels it up at an average rate. Uh, what that says there is lots of doubles, 
hopes to get on base, and then hopefully hits a few hard enough that they leave the park. I mean, in 2021, the guy had 42 doubles, and that was in Detroit, and that's a huge ballpark. Yeah, I think that'll play well the type of style that you already have with this clubhouse. Yeah. A lot of gap hitters, station to station. Yeah. You know what? Like that doubles power in Detroit, you know who that kind of reminds me of? Nicholas Castellanos. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. I mean, 42 doubles in 2021. He got hurt in 2022. Uh, Didn't have a great season. But again, 2023, Mm -hmm. 39 doubles. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's... That's pretty freaking rad. If you look at uh, now, I'm now I'm curious because I want to look at 2021 Nick Castellanos. There it is. So if you look at 2021 Nick Castellanos, he had 38 doubles. There you go. That was an All Star year. Uh, this year he had 37 doubles. Uh, 2019 58 doubles. I mean that's when he went went off. When he went, he went from Detroit to Chicago, and in Detroit he had thirty-seven. Chicago he had twenty-one. So it translated. He was seeing the ball really well and doing mm-hmm. that. So you could see an uptick, even more, going yeah. from a massive park in Washington, and I mean, it, you know, and in what ninety-nine games, thirty doubles, and you know, a decent chunk of those could a, a chunk of those could turn into homers. Very true. And also him just being uh, more of a, a, a young veteran. You know, he's 30, about right? Yeah, this is his age 30 season. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that'll be good for him being on a team with people that are in their mid-20s. Yeah. Still really trying to figure themselves out. No opt-outs either. 30, mm-hmm. 31, 32 age seasons. Club option for the 33 age season. Free agent at 34. You hope that he's more of a Nick Cassianos with those doubles and not like a Mike Moustakis. Yeah. Um, the, the way he's going to shape out here, like I'm not worried about him uh, athletically. I'm just hoping like he'll play well at the clubhouse because I think his number, like his numbers don't scare me or anything. I think he'll, he'll play well uh, just if he's going to like jive with the players. I think so. I don't, you know, I mean, he came up Cubs and then he was on some real bad Tigers teams. Mm. 18 19 20 21 22 so i mean that's 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 gonna callous you <laughs> i'm sure he's gonna make you he came up with some a lot of young guys in transition and then same with washington did a good job there and so I, I i think he'll jive i think he'll jive really well what also is nice first and third dh i mean that's mm. how how much more of that could be a crawl bell sweet spot for them with that flexibility yeah it makes a lot of sense it, they just love that shit. Mm-hmm. So my only question then is so you've got – you're looking at it. You go, all right, you rotate it first. You've got CES, Candelario. Second base, you rotate McLean, India. Shortstop, you rotate no one. It's just Ellie. Mm-hmm. Third base, you can rotate rotate Marte, Candelario. Yeah. Left field, steer. Center field. Um, TJ. With, yeah, TJ. And they're also in talks with, uh, oh, they reached, uh, rumored with Michael A. Taylor. Oh, yeah? To play, to, but I don't understand why you would do that when you also have right field being Jake Fraley and uh, Will Benson. You don't need outfield depth at that point. If you're going to do something in the outfield, you go get a bopper, mm. which they aren't going to go get Jorge Soler, and they aren't going to go get Teoscar Hernandez. So those two big bats are off the, t- they're not getting Cody Bellinger. So all of those big bat- bats are off the table. So it's like. Why would you go get a glove first outfielder like that? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, but as far as I think he's going to play in well with the mix here. And, dude, I don't know. What are, what are your anticipations here with him? I think I still think they're going to tra- they got to trade somebody. Yeah, that that's the thing. Like it's way, It was already too tight, and then they add him to the mix. It just seems like who are they priming for uh, a trade? And we were talking a little bit before this. Like They had like their non-trade uh players and I'm, i kind of feel like they maybe have sweetened that like a little bit to make some of these players that they're maybe a bit more willing to to deal away yeah kind of make them seem like have a bit more of an allure to them yeah i mean i think for me my no my, well for me my no trade guys are steer ces Marte, ellie 
I throw McLean in there. And McLean. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, that was the other one. Yeah. Those are my guys I'm not moving, period. You can go down in the minors and have a couple guys. You can. I was thinking about that, too. Like, there's your other flexibility for when you want to make, like, a, a trade for Dylan Cease or Tyler Glass now. Mm-hmm. I'm comfortable with trading one of these top prospects, like a Sal Stewart, or uh, I like Cam Collier a lot. We got a we got him in a right spot. I wouldn't move him. So, or I would trade, you know, a, a Sal Stewart or a Rhett Louder mm-hmm. because we got the second pick in the draft. That's what I was gonna say. We also got the second pick coming up. That's huge. You can immediately fill that value right back in by getting a, a high end. Prospect. Yeah, that definitely adds some flexibility with like some of their options they have for packaging deals. Yeah. So which means you can go realistically and you can go and get a Cease, a Glass now, not a Bieber, and be comfortable flipping that guy and Arroyo and knowing your infield set. Mm-hmm. And you're good. And then you pick whoever, you know, we'll look more into it when we get closer and the college baseball season happens, we get closer to the draft, but like Whoever is the second, whoever is the best or second best college pitcher. Yeah. I, I, I like it. What do you think? I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I just got so excited. <laughs> no, I'm really digging like uh, the future for the Reds. I, I cannot wait for the new season to come up here. Like, besides all the negativity we talked about, that's kind of like the back end stuff, uh, you know, the business side of baseball that's just really dark and damaging. Not, yeah, not as fun but uh i'm extremely excited for the reds coming up here i i like the the ability their, their willingness to make moves so it shows a sign of aggression and hopefully they do uh you know do a few more things here but not trade the people that uh you know we talked about so i'm really excited i think okay. it's gonna be a really fun uh year coming up and they also said like uh john Heyman, who was not in on the show hey malarkey to toronto um came in and said you know the reds aren't going to trade India. Last week I said, you know, it probably means they're going to trade India. But the more and more I think about him, like this is the worst time to trade him. His value is terrible. You should, if you were going to trade him, you were going to trade him after the 21 season. Mm -hmm. And they've come out and said like, uh, recently, Oh no, like we can have India play first. You can have India play left. You can play India play right. Like if he's willing to move around and play other positions, he kind of becomes a super utility. Mm hmm. And give anybody an off day, and there's going to be enough ABs to go around to keep him in it. Yeah, and still just like the the season he had last year, he's still defining who he is as a baseball player. So I don't think the season he had last year uh, is going to be who he ends up becoming. So I do, I am curious to see, and I, I'll probably forever, you know, root for Jonathan India, no matter like what hat he's wearing. Yeah. But uh, what you said about his value not being at peak for where, you know, if you're going to trade him for his most value. So I don't think they're going to trade him right now. I think he's going to have to play, you know, part of a season. Uh, otherwise, they're going to leave a lot on the table if yeah. they do trade him. Also, he hasn't been available. Think about that. He was hurt most of 22. True. Hurt half of 23. So what do you... So you are basically saying that you have all this depth and that you're going to be able to use it because he there's a chance he could miss 20, 25 games with another hamstring injury. Mm-hmm. Why not be prepared for that? There's been so many injuries. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a realistic possibility. I don't know, man. The more and more now, like, I've thought about the past week and putting it together, unless it's, like, India, Louder, Stewart for for Dylan Cease. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do that. We'll Mm -hmm. see you guys. Bye. But aside from that, man, I don't don't know. I don't know. But now, the, the more and more that I've... Even though I've been tooting this horn since, you know, he signed with Scott Boris and saying, oh, they're going to move him whenever they could get a chance to and get peak value. Well, this isn't peak value right now. So I, I, maybe I'm leaning this week that they're not going to do it. And then they're going to do it tomorrow and trade for Dylan Cease and India's gone. Yeah, I can see them. If they do do it, I can see them do do. Uh, <laughs> if they do do it, I can see them doing do it because uh, it's just like, let's peel the bandaid off. It seems like an appropriate time uh-huh. uh, just so it hurts less. But... I I don't see that happening. I see them uh, having him get more value. And I kind of like the idea of seeing these guys all play together in the spring training. Just really competing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think that's just going to make them a lot sharper. And it's just really going to elevate everyone's game knowing how tight things are going to be. God, it's going to be so fun. I'm so excited. So here's what they need to do. They need to go trade for a frontline starter. 
Absolutely. Or they could trade for... They, you know what they could do? They could sign Marcus Stroman. That'd be really cool. That'd he'd, be tight. He'd be a great fit at GABP. Ground ball guy, sinkers, come on. That'd be sick. Mm -hmm. Spend the money. Just do it. Here's what you can do. You can sign him to a $2 million annual contract mm -hmm. and defer it yeah. afterwards. Yeah, uh, we know a guy, Shohei. He said it's fine. You can do it. It's cool. Mm. You know what? I heard it's. I heard it's gonna be Strowman's idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely his idea. It's all his idea. Mm. Not a big deal. Mm. Uh -huh. But go get a, go do that. Uh, sign David Robertson for back end for another setup. Um, and then um, I think you're. I think you're done shopping. I think you're done, and then you're set. And we're excited for when pitchers and catchers report. Very much. God damn, that's so exciting. Fuck, let's just throw that into the world. Sign Marcus Strome. So that you don't have to give up anybody. Just give up money in the future. In the year 2034. <laughs> <laughs> that's for, that's the, uh, yeah. Conan fans. Come on. Yeah. Oh, man. God damn. <laughs> Uh, oh, here's something really funny. I forget yeah. who tweeted it, but I liked it. Did you? So, uh, I don't know if you saw Nick Senzel signed by the Washington Nationals. That's cool. One year, two million dollars. Him and Shohei Otani will be making the same amount of money this year. That is absolutely bonkers. That is just it's, gross. Yeah, it's gross. I don't like it. Let's round third and head for home. Okay. What do you have? Uh, I have a New Year's Eve gig uh, in Blue Ash. I think we talked about uh -huh. it before. Um, if you're in some sort of uh, adult uh, club in the uh, Cincinnati, greater Cincinnati area, I might see you then. I'm also going to be in Dayton, Kentucky, I believe, uh, January something with here, Phil Pointer. Yeah. I'll post more about it. It's at this uh, nice uh, club in Kentucky that's been – Put up a lot of really good shows, so I'm really excited to be on the calendar for 2024. Yeah. Uh, what do you got coming up, buddy? I was there at uh, Commonwealth Sanctuary a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And then uh, Alicia came upstairs, and she was like, I'm so sorry, and handed me my wallet, and she washed my check, so I have to go get another check. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. This is so funny. Yeah. Uh, but I just haven't bothered Sean, because he had a baby. Congratulations. So I'm like, I could be like, hey, man, I know you're busy uh, changing new diapers, but... Uh, right off a new check. Can you give me a new check? <laughs> or just Venmo me. Um, so uh, December 19th, I'm at a brewery in Indianapolis. I need to get that figured out, because that's a week from tomorrow. It's going to be me and Garrett Teitelbaum and John Holmes. Ooh, baby. And then December 30th, I will be at The Comet. Uh, opening up for uh, old co-host in front of the pod, Lee Michael Kimbrell. So those go. are the dates I have right now. Do I have anything in January, February? Not yet. And mind your own business. So uh, thank you to Sports Drink for hosting the audio of this podcast. Uh, check out intheclutch.com. Promo code NASTYBOYS. 10% off. You can go to In The Clutch. Right now, and you can get your official Shohei Otani shirt. Are you going to get it before you get a jersey from Fanatics? You bet you will. You bet you will. Go do it. God, I hated doing that. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank, uh, thanks for having me over in the Fart Dungeon and doing this. Yeah, anytime. Thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for uh, watching, paying attention, listening to us do all this uh, crazy, goofy stuff. So if unless anything really happens that affects the Reds, basically, or the Reds sign somebody, I don't, I don't know if we have any reason to get back here until the beginning of the new year. Until there's some news. So if we're here next week, we're here because something happened. If we're not... Yeah. We're not. The holidays are here. We're going to spend time with our friends and family and play Grand Theft Auto 4 and 5 because you forgot to play them when they were good. Mm -hmm. And you really got excited about the GTA 6 trailer, so you're going back and doing that. And we got to go record shopping. I just Ooh. got a record player. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Talking to you, John Holmes. Yeah, buddy. And thank you for watching, listening, all that good stuff. And as always, go Red Legs. Go Red Legs. <laughs>